Welcome to Haxby Shed and the Welding Rotator Part 2. The next thing I'm going to do is to make the insulator ring for here. Now, I did have a try. I used this green plastic sheet with this really cheap and nasty trepanning tool. I wasn't really happy with it. So I tried cutting a couple of circles out of cork floor tiles. And actually, technically, they would work pretty well. But the edges are really rough um, because I can't cut a very good circle with scissors and, a, and a, just a drawing compass. So having rejected that idea, really, I'm going to try using this acrylic sheet. It's six millimeter thick. Try and get two circles cut. Now, I can then glue the two circles together, hopefully, with super glue, which makes a really, really good glue for acrylic. But acrylic is very difficult to cut, really, if it's, if it's chilly, it cracks. Don't know how this is going to go, but we'll give it a try, okay? Right then, goggles on, gloves on. Two big studs here to hopefully retain this so it doesn't spin all over. Did I say this was difficult? Now with nuts on to try and stop it lifting. Well, despite all expectations, it's actually work. It's all a bit scary. Well, there you are, number two, look. I'm gonna cut the centers out on the lathe. I need one 80 millimeter diameter center and one 58 millimeter diameter center. I'm going to use a high speed steel tool to cut this acrylic because it'll be sharper obviously than carbide. Well, that was a bit tedious, but I didn't want to crack it. So now I need to finish to the dimension I want there, 80 millimetres. Well those two are done, the centres anyway. And I'm just going to put the other jaws in and just do a tiny light skim on this surface just to make it more beautiful. Okay, let's try. Insulator. Layer 1. Layer 2. Let's try the back plate on. I want this back plate and chuck spring loaded against this copper sheet. Spring. Now I'm not going to do any more to this back plate and insulator setup until I get the copper sheet because I wanted to make it all to measure. But what I can do now, while I'm waiting for the copper sheet, is I can make the channel for the purge gas, which, if I need to use it, would come up through the centre of the chuck. So I'm going to drill a hole through this, all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to drill a hole up under here somewhere. I need to find out just where, this side, that side, don't know. And I'll press in a barbed brass tail end underneath, and the idea is the gas comes in, fills this cavity and then comes up through the hole which I'm going to make in this. That's the idea. And that's why I've cut this quite close to this. It won't be gas tight exactly, but the gas is going to go along the easiest channel. There'll be no way of the gas coming out of the sides really. So um, that's what I need to do next. This is just a little bit of an interference fit on the shaft, so a little bit of heat 
helps to shift it. I need to get myself a decent gas torch. When I say it helps to shift it, there it goes. Oh, give me a second. Ow! I managed to miss everything important. I wanted the barb fitting to be right at the back here out of the way because it's brass and if it was anywhere else I'm sure I would break it off. I've made my little brass spigot with a barbed end to fit in this hole for the gas to come into. What is a couple of seconds to you is about an hour of messing about for me. <laughs> but I think it'll fit now. Perhaps put a bit of Loctite on it and just tap it in. Can you see that? Nozzle. There we go. And at this side, let's see if we can turn that round. There it is, there. So that will take the gas into this chamber here. And then that one, that one. That'll sort of contain the gas here and it'll the easiest path for the gas will be up through the center, through the chuck. And where it is there, it's tucked away at the back. I might clamp here, here somehow, here, front. I won't be doing anything here. So the tube can just come down and I'll find a way of uh, putting it through a loop or something. A lot of the time it won't have a tube connected anyway. It's only when I need to use purge gas in the center of a tube or something like that. I'm going to drill a four and a half millimeter hole in there which will form a channel for the gas. A bit later on I'm going to open up this part of the hole, the top end of this hole let's say, and press in that barbed spigot there. Then if I need to fix a uh, PVC pipe on there to run up through the centre of the chuck and up to some other part of something I'm holding then I'll be able to do that. The reason I'm not pressing that in at this stage is because I don't know how long this needs to be. Now this goes through the centre of the chuck no problem at all and it doesn't interfere with the jaws but I need to leave enough room so that the jaws are kind of here or I make that spigot slightly shorter because this spring washer is going on there this is going on there I need to lock all this together and I can do it with some of the things I got with this that goes on there so that locks it to this, this and this are locked. This can be screwed on, but this surface comes really to the back of here. There's no room here for this, so I need to machine out um, a recess for this all to sit in. So at that stage, um, I'll know how long to make this thing. I've dropped this hole down to four millimeter in the end. I just think it's better. Now, some time ago I bought this Morse Taper 3 shell cutter from the Auto Jumble for three pounds. I've always wanted to find a use for it and I can do some of the roughing out with this. Now I've set my lathe onto the low range and it's uh, 120 RPM. Now, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that the spindle bearings don't get any oil at that speed. So I've set my headstock oil pump going, press the button to give it a squirt of oil into the spindle bearings before I start. And we'll see whether or not my uh, rather weedy 1.5 horsepower lathe will be able to uh, cut this.
Well, the answer to that is yes. There goes the oil pump again. I've still got about 0.3 millimetres to go on the depth and I need to take the diameter out from 50 to 54 now and I'll do that with a boring bar. But I'm very pleased with that shell cutter. First time I've had real success with it and uh, once again the good old Harrison 140 pulls it off. All right, for three quid. There we are. I need to make a spacer and I can do that with a piece of plastic pipe that I have. It's a so put the spring washer on the end of that collar, put that onto there like that, drop that onto there like that, drop that onto there like that and that on like that. It just wanted to be slightly awkward, so I put in a couple of screws to give me some purchase on it to tighten it up. So tomorrow I'll drill six holes right through into the back plate, but only about three millimetres deep. And those will be for the locking screws to lock this ring to the back plate. And then I'll have to drill three holes, somewhere like that I think, so that I can fix the chuck on from the front. It was fixed on from the back lock but we want it fixed on from the front now. Well, it's not tomorrow yet, it's still today. But as I stood here looking at this, I've realised something which you've probably realised already and I've only just figured out. The spring is acting in the wrong direction. I want the spring to cause pressure between this face and the copper sheet behind. And of course, with the spring behind there, it's acting in the opposite direction. So I'm going to have to sleep on that one. Can't believe I've got to this point before I've realised that. Never mind. If you were at home going, but the spring's on the wrong side. You were right.